Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss 4G packet core call flow in detail. So let's start. My first request will go from UE to E node B to MME will be attach request. UE sends its attach type information in its EPS attach type and it can be EPS attach or combined EPS attach. If we are attaching to uh, both CS and PS domain, then it will be combined EPS attach or if we are attaching to only EPS domain, then in, it will be only EPS attach. So if you see here, uh, the message is initial UE message, attach request, PDN connectivity request. Here protocols are mentioned S1AP protocol, which is between E node B and MME and NAS EPS protocol, which is between UE and MME. So let's see in detail. So here in S1AP PDU initial message, we send E node B UE S1 API ID, NAS PDU, tracking area identity, EU trans cell group identity, RRC establishment cause. So in NAS PDU, when you expand this message, non access stratum PDU, we can see what is the attach type here. If you see, this is example of combined EPS MC attach and this is EPS attach only EPS type. So uh, what combined registration means? It means that only uh, UE is simultaneously perform registration for CS network and PS network. While EPS is only EPS service UE requesting for. Once attached request received by MME, MME will send authentication information request toward HSS. And HSS will, will reply authentication information answer with authentication vector toward MME. Uh, so the protocol between the MME and HSS is diameter. So in message we can see this is diameter protocol. Request is 3GPP authentication information request. Interface is S6A. So in this request we send session ID, origin host, origin realm, destination realm to the HS, HSS for authentication and we request for supported features of that particular UE from HSS. Then HSS will reply 3GPP authentication information answer with supporting feature of the UE and authentication vector. These are RAND, XRES, AUTN and CASME value. Once MME received the authentication vectors from HSS, it sent authentication request toward UE. So the request will be S1EP NAS EPS downlink NAS transport authentication request and MME will pass the RAND value in that particular authentication request. Then UE will respond with the authentication answer. So here S1 EP NAS EPS uplink NAS transport authentication response and it will send the XRES value toward MME. Then MME will check uh, the XRES value which is coming from HSS and coming from the UE. Once it match, matches, it will send the NAS security mode command toward UE. NAS security mode command MME uses to securely deliver NAS signaling message between MME and UE. 
and in this request MME will also ask for the IMAI of the UE and UE will respond with the IMAI number. In S1 AP NAS EPS uplink NAS transport security mode complete command. Once NAS security mode command complete, MME will send IMEI for ME identity check request toward EIR to check UE is white listed or blacklisted. EIR will check that uh, what is the status of the UE and it will respond back with IME identity check response. So here uh, we are using diameter protocol between MME and EIR. The request will be 3GPP ME identity check request and ME identity check answer. Here if you see equipment status is whitelisted. Once EIR authentication done, MME will send update location request toward HSS and HSS will reply update location answer to that request. So here you see uh, protocol is diameter and command type is 3GPP update location request. In update location request, we will send origin host, origin RLM, destination host, destination RLM, MC uh, in username, what is the RAT type and what is the visited PLM and ID. And in response, HSS will say diameter success. It has updated the location. Once update location answer is done, MME will send a request over S gateway and it will give P gateway IP also to S gateway that which P gateway S gateway have to select. Now how MME will know that in which S gateway I have to send the request and which P gateway S gateway have to select. For that MME will perform GNDNS query. Then from here it will get the S gateway IP address and P gateway IP address as well. In GNDNS query, uh, the selection criteria for S gateway will be tag based and for a selection criteria for P gateway will be APN wise. Once MME will get the S gateway and P gateway IP address, it will send create session request toward S gateway. So here if you see over GTP v2 protocol, we are sending create session request toward S gateway. So what we are sending here, MC, MSISDN, IMEI, user location info, serving networks, RAT type, FQDN of S11 MME GTP C interface. This include MME and S11 interface tunneling and ID and IPv4 IP address of that particular interface and it will request for S5 SC GTPC tunneling and ID and IP allocate toward UE, UE IP address it will request for and PCO option for the GIDNS query and PCSCF selection it will also request. Now let's see, once S gateway will receive create session request, it will pass the request over P gateway. Then P gateway will send credit control request toward PCRF. And PCRF will reply with the rule installed for that particular UE with the credit control answer. So here we can see that what we are sending in credit control request toward PCRF. So 
we are sending origin host origin realm destination realm subscription ids which include msi isdn and mc framed ip address ip can type and the ip assigned to the ue uh, by p gateway user location information sgsn mcc mnc p gateway ip address s gateway ip address all the information we are sending in credit control request message toward pcrf now pcrf based on the condition put on the ue it will reply with the rule installed in the ue so here if you see we have multiple charging rule installed uh, here for example uh, the rule install is youtube underscore r but this uh, uh, you have multiple rule installed so based on the preference precedence of the rule it will select that which rule it have to apply first and take the priority once pcrf will give the rule install the same credit control request will go toward the OCS online charging system and OCS will reply with a credit control answer. So if we see this request is going toward the OCS, it will send the almost same parameter which we have sent for the credit control request of the PCRF. OCS will reply with the what is the validity time of the user or for that particular user if there is any uh, limited uses is allowed like 1 gbps or 10 gbps then it will give the users information also once credit control answer received from the ocs p gateway will send create session response toward s gateway and s gateway will send create session response to mme in create session response S gateway will reply to the MME with the what is the IP allocated to the UE. PCO option. In PCO option, it will give the PCCF IP address and GIDNS IP information. Then fully qualified domain name. This includes the S11, S4, S gateway GTPC interface, tunneling and ID of the S gateway and and the IPv4 address of the S gateway S11 and then P gateway, tunneling and ID of P gateway and IPv4 address. Also, it will give the S1 US gateway tunneling and ID. Now we have S gateway S1 U tunneling and ID with MME. Once we receive this create session response, MME will send a initial context setup request over E node B. So in initial context setup request, it will MME will say attach accept and it will give a GUTI value to the UE and it will ask for the E node B tunneling end ID because we have received the S gateway S1 U tunneling end ID. But S gateway don't have E node B tunneling and ID for the E node B and S gateway setup. So in initial context setup response, E node B will give E node B tunneling and ID for S1U interface. So here you see initial context setup request attach accept. So this is the request and the initial context setup response in which we are getting the tunneling end ID of E node B. Once tunneling end ID of E node B received, MME will send modify bearer request toward S gateway. In modify bearer request, it will give the E node B and tunneling end ID for S1 U setup. Once it receives, S gateway and E node B will get connected and user traffic will start flowing and S gateway will respond with the modify bearer. 
So here uh, you see in modify PR request, MME is sending S1U E node B GTPU interface tunneling end ID. And once S gateway will uh, receive this uh, tunneling end ID, the user flow will start from UE to S gateway, P gateway and internet. Thank you. I hope this video clear the call flow of 4G EPC. Please comment if there is any queries on this. Thank you so much.